Hello everybody, and welcome to a brand new stream. A brand new, um, it's not brand new. Welcome to the final stream for turn complete. I assume it's the final one, because I'm quite close to the end. I don't think I'm going to get any hang-ups like robot racing anymore, so let's see. I mean, Waterworld might end up just being the hardest one, in which case I'll spend maybe even a full hour on it. But I I don't believe. Alright. We are updating the Galactic Encyclopedia food, inserting human names. As we don't have an alphabet, entries into the encyclopedia are ordered by deliciousness. First, read the 15 deliciousness scores from the input one by one. Your task is to output them in sorted order, smallest to largest. It's a sorting algorithm. Huzzah. I think... Oh, gosh. I probably end up implementing bubble because I'm lazy. Bubble's the easiest implement. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to do divide and conquer because that sounds hard to implement properly. Because uh, we don't. We we don't have function calls. That's the issue. We quick sort and yeah, quick sort and um, bubble sort. No, not bubble sort and uh, merge sort. All those divide and conquer algorithms that have n log n time. They're easy enough to implement on a proper. <laughs> programming language, but we don't have one. We have one that forces you to write things in like registers. I think you can save parameters per function call into uh, the stack. But I would rather not do that. So we'll just do bubble sort because I can do that in place without any worry. It's, a, it's an easy algorithm. All right, so we need to, s oh gosh. You know what, let's keep them. Um, so we need to set, okay, no, register zero is already at 15, at uh, zero. So we need to label read loop. So that's the first thing. Copy, input, to no, oh, we haven't we haven't defined input yet. That would be register seven. There we go. Copy input to red uh ram increment reg for yeah let's just increment reg for one reg for let's let's do it this way. I think this is clearer than using the word by that I've been doing before. So increment reg4 by 1, put it back in reg4. Um, equate, okay, equates, we want the 2 reg4, 15. Oh wait, we don't neck. Neck 2. It does not, if it does not equate 15, we jump back to read loop. There we go, like that. Okay. So that reads all the inputs. Now we need to do the bubble sort. Set 0 to reg4. Oh wait, no. Label bubble sort. So we'll set 0 to reg4. Then what we need to do is we need to do... Oh yeah, we need to do a skip. Skip bubble. So. I need I need a strict inequality. So just less. Do we have that? Or wait, less or greater? And also what is their opcodes? 
Eventually, I should have written. I should have written down all the upgodes early on, but uh, it's a bit late for that now. The upcode for. So this is less than. We want greater than. So that would be nor. I think it's this one. Let me double check. So, so okay, if it's that one, then it would be, so it's 32. So it's 32 is that one. And then it would be one, zero, one, two, three, four. Four. Okay, I have the right up code. Now to double check if this is, a, this is what I think it is. Which is greater than or equal to, so. On, off, okay, yes, it's, um, so it's 36. Greater. Thirty-six. That one. So gek uh, greater. It's not gek. It's just greater. So if. Oh wait, we need to. I think we need to send the values from RAM into. Into. Um... A register because it'll make it easier to compare so we'll need to set ram oh wait we need to oh yeah that's correct In copy input to ram uh set ram to no not set ram copy ram to let's go red zero copy no then we need to Set one to reg four. Copy RAM to reg one. Okay. Now we need to start the loop. So label bubble sort loop. Okay. So we're checking if reg zero is greater than reg one. Okay. Oh, wait, no. We want to skip, so we actually we want lack. We want less than or equal to. My bad. So that would be opcode 111. Okay. We do actually want lack. Back, which is going to be 32 1 1 1 no just 1 1 there we go deck skip bubble okay so this this means now we run the thing that runs that like checks things so firstly we're gonna set 1 to reg Three. So this will no rush two. This will um, basically tell us that we've moved something, which is very important. Now we need to swap the locations. So currently we are on the second ones. We are on, on the second red four. Yeah, so so we we're currently on one. If we if we run it one time, so we need to uh, copy reg zero to ram. Then we need to decrement reg for zero. Oh no, one. 
reg4. Then we need to copy reg1 to rem. Okay, increment reg4 one reg4. And then increment and move on. Okay, so now we're, the register 4 is in the same place and we're incremented by 1. Now, we've, now we enter what we've previously been doing. We need to increment reg4 by 1 again. So now we're going to the next step. And we only want to stop if we reach the end. So that is if we reach 16. So, so if it's not equal to, if reg register 4 is not equal to 16. Oh wait, we should have this on 16, actually. No, 15. Uh, we, we're doing 0 to 14. Yeah, sorry. There's, 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 there's 14 items. No, there's 15 items. But it goes from 0 to 14. Yes, yes, yes. So, so when we reach 15, we're done. So if we neck, if it's not equal to 15, we redo bubble sort loop. Okay. Maybe at the very start, I should also uh, set 0 to reg 2, just so I remember it. Now, if we equate... If we find out that um, we've swapped something, so register 2 will equal 1. So if we, if register 2 is equal to 1, so we do x2, register 2, 1, then we go back, we just start from the beginning. So bubble sort. Now, if not, now we've entered the output loop, which we write the right loop. Um, okay, set, we need to start, we need to do it there, set, zero, no, red, yeah, zero to reg four, that's what we want to do, set zero to reg four, um, copy, ram to output. Increment reg4 1 reg4 and finally Oh wait Yeah, we can just we can just keep going forever, okay I forgot I forgot every time I update to that I have to, I have to update register 0 and register 1. Um, silly me. So we've incremented. Now register 0. We don't care about it anymore. We copy reg1 to reg0. And then we copy... In hindsight, I've got, I could have done it differently, but I don't care. And then we copy RAM to Reg1. Okay. So now we're bubbling. Actually, let me... I should probably show what ha what's happening in RAM. So bubble sort... It's a very simple algorithm. There we go. All we're gonna do is constantly swap if if the greater number is to the left of the small number. So here, so we want to send 151 basically to the very end. So since 20 is smaller than 151, we'll swap the two. Uh, we've somehow, wait. So that is not what's supposed to happen.
Or did I mess up? Oh, I put this in the wrong... Wait. Uh, this should be the right place. Okay, read them in. Okay, I think they have to swap places properly. So now that should be a two. So we copy register one to register zero. Oh, hang on a minute. That's what went wrong. That is what went wrong. Okay. We need to copy RAM to reg zero first. Because reg yeah. Register one will have the wrong value if we swap. But if we copy from RAM, we should be good. Okay. There we go. So, 251 is very slowly bubbling up. And then things are bubbling down. So, this 84 will move there. Yeah, and then this 84 will move down. And as we slowly keep going, you'll see this 2016 travel all the way there. These two will start traveling down, like that. And then these ones will start traveling down. Bonk, bonk. There we go. And so now these are in the right order. So we're going to run over the entire list one more time to make sure we're correct. And now we copy them into output. Just like that. Okay. And because this is not a very efficient program, I'm going to run this in 10k hertz. <laughs> there we go. It runs faster than a fast computer. I'll promise you that. It's just not a very fast computer. We all talk the way robots move on the dance floor. That's why we want him to lead our dance team. Oh, we all like the way. The only problem is to make him come up with original dance sequence. How do you make creativity out of determinist logic, you ask? The answer, pseudo-random number generators. In this level, you only get one input. We call this the initial seed. The seed is put through the following steps to produce a pseudo-random number. In the algorithm below, SHL1 means shift left once, SHL2 SHL means shift left twice, and SHR1 means shift rotate once. Seed XOR, temp1 XOR, temp2 XOR. Next output seed next output next seed mod four to move the robot. Finally use next seed before mod four as the seed to get the next number in the dense sequence. And repeat. Okay. I'm gonna write this down. Do I need this piece of paper? I do not. I mean, they're basically telling us exactly what to do, so... Temp1 is equal to seed, which we will keep in probably register 1. S... Yeah, if, if we define all these new variables, we might as well just store them in registers. Makes things simple. Temp1 XOR Temp1 SHL1 and then next seed temp2 XOR temp2 SHR2 okay do we have a little robot? oh we have a little robot look at this like a little, ro little robot-y boy okay 
So now I have the program written down. I can probably just copy this. So the first thing we're going to do, um, copy input to register zero. Very simple. We're just copying input register zero. No hassle. Now, what we need to do is label loop. That's going to be a loop. Um, so we need to do seed XOR seed shift rotated by one. The only issue is we haven't implemented that yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, we need to do this. I mean, we haven't used the 8 one yet, so we have space, but... Okay. How do we do this? How do we do this in a neat way? I guess we get them out like this. Yeah, ideally, I think... Basically, we just... You know what? Let's just define this again. We're making Alu bigger. But not by much. Actually, we literally only want one thing. Well, two things. 800 and 801. So. So, well, that's not bad. Because we basically. That's all the gates we have, right? Oh, wait. Oh, we don't need rotate. Sorry. What am I doing? We only need shift left and shift right. I, th I thought for some reason we need to rotate. Okay, nope, that makes things simpler. Because we, we already have everything implemented. Um, it's in 7 and 8. Shift left, I think, is... Oh, no, 6 and 7, sorry. Shift left, I think, is 6. So that would make sense. Yes, shift left is 6. So we'll have that. Um... Okay, so temp1 is going to be register1. And we need to do seed XOR seed. So let's just store seed shift right by 1. So actually we need to define shift right. <laughs> and shift left. The shift left, uh, we're going to do... Yeah, the first one is the immediate value. Shift left is this one. And then this is shift right. Okay. So, shift right 1, register 0, which is seed to reg 1. Then we're going to do XOR. So, X, this XOR should just be raw, a raw XOR. Yes. Reg 0, reg 1, reg 1. Okay. So, that's our first temp. Our second temp is temp 1. XOR temp1 shift left1. I think that's a 1. Did I write a 1? Yes, it's a 1. So, so now we're going to do temp1 shift left1. So it's going to be shift left1, reg1, reg1. Reg one, reg two, XOR, reg one, reg two, in reg two. All right. Next seed. So that's gonna be gonna copy that into register zero. So 
So we're gonna um, not copy. We're gonna do. We have to to temp two XOR temp two shift right by two. So we need to do. That doesn't seem very random to me, but Ooh, what the heck do I know? Um. So we need to do shift right two. And we're taking reg two to reg zero. And then XOR reg two reg zero reg zero. Okay. So now we need to send the last four bits. So we need to define a constant. Const mask, which is going to be the number three and we're going to ex no not exor we need to end we don't have it do we have the word mask oh yeah we define it as a constant okay we're gonna define and um the second no let's let's do the second one and is which one again i don't remember let's check when in doubt Open up your computer, strip it to its bare bones, and is uh, it was actually two. My guess is correct. And is in fact two. And we're gonna make the second value instantaneous. So we're gonna and register zero, wisdom ask. To output and then just I just looped there we go damn okay something went wrong Let me just double check that what I wrote down was correct. So attempt to XOR temp two. Okay, so temp2, XOR, temp2, sh right, shift left. Okay, so the only thing I could have messed up maybe is the codes. So shift right, shift left. These should be right. Let me just double check. So I think I wrote down shift, this is shift left. Oh wait, hang on. All right, that's how I defined it. We have to make the second one instantaneous. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I did. I defined them that way. Okay. I could also just switch over the wires to make my life easier, but nah. Let's respect the hardware. There we go.
Okay, let me, let me... This is random numbers. This is not exactly the most interesting thing to look at. All right. Tower of Alloy. We need to help you clean... We need to help you clean up the basement. Specifically, we want you to move piles of radioactive discs from an old reactor. Just be sure not to put a bigger disc on top of a smaller disc or the whole ship will blow up. The first four inputs will give you the following in order. Disc NR, the highest disc number in the pile, 2 to 4. Source, which location number to move from destination, where to move the pile to spare. The third spot that is neither the source nor the destination. Control the crane with the following outputs. Move the magnet to spot 0, toggle the magnet on or off. Uh, there we go. Tower of Hanoi. So they're gonna be like this, and then we're gonna move them to a different destination. Now there is a very specific algorithm to do this, and the idea is that is to use recursion. Basically, the algorithm goes as follows. If we need to move this tower from 0 to 2, first we'll move this at 0 to 3 to 1, then we'll move 4 to 2, then we'll move this tower to 2, from 1 to 2. How do we do that? Well, if we want to move this tower, uh, if we want to move 0 to 3 onto 1, first we need to move 0 to 2 onto 2, then we move 3 onto 1, then we move 0 to 2 onto 3. How do we do that? Well, in order to move 0 to 2 onto 2, we need to first move 0, 1 to 1. Then we need to move 1 to 2. Then we move 0, 1 to 2. How do we do that? Well, to move 0, 1 to 1, we first need to move 0 to 2, 1 to 1, and 0, 0 onto 1. And then basically we just keep doing this. Um, and I, I could solve it like this. I guess it's... Is this a long solution? I don't know. The point is recursion. Um, go here first. Here, there, uh-huh, there, 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 there. So that is how you move zero to two. Now, we're given different parameters, but the idea is that we can use function calls for this. Now, Let's define the, the the function first. This is the Towers of Hanoi, so let's call it Hanoi. Um, we're going to assume the following. Register 0 is going to have this, the height of the tower that we want to move. Register 1 will contain the, the, the initial position of the tower, and then Register 2 will contain the destination. So, how do we solve this? Well, if we'll, we'll do this, the we can do the simplest case is if we want to move nothing. Um, I think we, yeah, we'll need, we need a returner again. Which is returns. There we go. So. So if register 0 is equal to 0, and oh, we need a query 2, then we return. So we do nothing. Otherwise, um, we want to move the top tower first, so we will decrement 
reg zero by one. Put that back in there. Um, we basically want to keep the initial destination the same. So yeah, we need to keep track of all of the variable changes. Because after that, we have to change everything back to the way it was, which is going to be very difficult. That's the only thing I'm, I, I have to think about. Which, which is where we might need to use the stack um, so that we can store parameters. Um, but anyway, register zero is fine. What we need to do is we need to call, we need to switch, we need to switch, uh, register two to the value that is not register zero, uh, register one. So. We need to come up with a logic that hmm. I wonder if there's a, there's a hacky way of doing this. So I think there is. The sum of the three numbers equals, so the sum of zero, one, and two is three. So if we're missing one of these numbers from the two, from register zero and register, from register one and register two, if we're missing one of the numbers, then that missing amount is going to be necessary to get register one plus register two up to three. So what I mean is, 0 plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. Register two, register 1 and 2 are going to equal two of those three numbers. Therefore, the difference between adding register 1 and register 2 and 3 is the other number that we're missing. So, um, so we just, all we need to do is we need to... Subtract register two from or th okay, hang on. We need uh, we need to subtract one. Okay, put that back in register two, and then we subtract register two. Register one. Put that back in register two. Okay, so that's the correct value. Now I need to double check subtract. Oh, subtract does have an instant value. Okay, there you go. So now it, that's correct. Register two is going to be correct. And what we now need is to run the program. Call the function. Hanoi. Now, if we assume everything went well, we rerun the same bit of code. So th this should so this should reset. So this should reset everything back. So every time we call a function, we need to reset the values so that the values are correct. So if we reset this. Now we can, um, now we need to do the, the, the crane thing. So we need to copy, oh no, we need to set, 
No, no, actually, we need to copy. We need to copy reg1 to output. We need to set... Okay, what's the last... What's the fourth value that we need? Five. Okay, we need five. Wait, why five? Five is such an awkward number. Oh, it's zero, one, two, five. It's a reference to me, of course. Um, set five to output. So that'll pick up the piece. Copy reg one to output. No, reg two to output. And then set five to output. Perfect. Now we need to switch one to be uh, register one to be the to be the missing one. So we need to do it's the same code except we need to swap register one register two. Like that. And then we copy that. And then finally, we need to increment register zero. So, so now everything, all the values are the same as when we initially called the function, which is a very important part because it ensures that our logic stays consistent. And then we return. Okay. Let's watch this in action. All right, we need to initially set everything. I forgot, we need to set the, the values up. We need to set a uh, copy input to reg zero, copy input to reg one, copy input to reg two. Okay, there we go. That was an important step I forgot to add. Look at my baby go. He's doing the exact same thing as I was doing, so. Oh no! What happened? Hang on, that's actually, that's actually kind of a weird bug to have. Why would this happen? Because it worked perfectly fine up until this point. Huh. The only thing I can think of is it's not resetting properly. And I've just gotten lucky so far or something. Okay, let me just stop it when we reach the four point. So right now, actually, we need. Let's do a little bit more. Okay, here. Okay. So now this should be on. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so now we're at the top. Two. Four. Why does it go back to two? Oh, okay, that's what happened. It terminated too early. Okay, yeah. I guess the way I define my code isn't quite accurate, but this should be fine. Wait, actually, should this be fine? Hmm. Oh, okay. We actually do want to move from zero to one. Okay. Okay, it works. <laughs> Let's see this. We had the intern type out planet names in human script. Unfortunately, he forgot to capitalize each name. The input in this level represents a character in a list of planet names encoded as ASCII. Each name is separated by a space which has the numeric value 32. Replace the first letter in each word with its uppercase counterpart. The possible input characters are A to Z lowercase, space, apostrophe, and dash. All right, we need to figure out the ASCII of each of these characters. Well, A to Z are actually convenient when it comes to changing the the capitalization. You basically change like one bit. Um, I'm hoping they actually have ASCII. Okay, they do have ASCII. There we go. Oh gosh, hang on. We do text. Um, what's the thing we needed? I forgot the other characters it could be because we need to check for those as well. Okay, space, which is thirty-two. Uh, apostrophe and dash. Um. Do we have example text? Let's not delete all of my code. That would be bad. Wait. Okay, is so that a posture? Um. Yeah. So we need. So it's not that one. It's the other one, right? That one? 39? I don't actually know what this one's called, but it's, it looks very similar to an apostrophe, but it isn't. I think 39 is the apostrophe. 39. And then a dash. So there's an underscore. Now underscore is 95. Dash is 45. Okay. Now, the thing about capital, so we have the capitals and we have the lowercase. Now, the, 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 the good thing about um, capitals and lowercase is they differentiate by one character, which is the 32. 65 plus 32 gets us 97. 66 plus, 98, uh, plus 32 gets us 98, so on and so forth. So that's one bit. We just have to change one bit, but we have to make sure it's the right bit. And we have to... Um, we have to do it precisely when the next bit is 32. So... I'm guessing what we need to do 
we need to read and then output. And I think we start capitalizing immediately. Label. So capitalize. Might as well be the first thing we write down. All that's doing, we could we could use add. We could use a bit. Flip. Let's use add because it's the easiest one. Um, const capi capital bit. Sure, and it's just the number thirty-two. So we're going to in increment. Output 32 output. Okay. Label read. So we need to copy the in. Oh, wait, input. I mean, they're the same thing. Okay, so cop. So we need to copy the input. Because we can't lose it immediately. Copy input. Um, to register zero. Then we need to copy reg zero to output. And then if we... If register zero is equal to to our capital bit... Oh yeah, we might as well... Oh no, it's equal to space. Which is the same thing. Space. <laughs> it's equal to space. Then we capitalize. Otherwise, we just we just jump back to read. That's I think that's literally the entire code. Oh, okay, there we go. We need to decrement the other way around. There we go. We go from a capital to lowercase by adding 32. We need to reduce by 32. So, voca space. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and now the only other edge case, but yeah, it's all good. It works, okay. All right. The last one. Good news, we want to turn Earth into an exotic water park. We need you to help us find a good location for the Pirate's Plunge water slide. Specifically, we're looking for an area that can hold a high volume of water. The landscape is 16 columns wide. Read the input 16 times to get the height of the landscape at each column from left to right. Then output the total volume that the landscape can carry as the answer. Aha! That's what we need to do. Okay, this is... This is an actual coding challenge. Except we have to write this in the esoteric language that this game requires us to do it in. I have an idea. So the idea is... So we have a fixed landscape. We read in the height. 
and then we basically flood the land. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to start left to right. And if there is a divot, that means we can put an extra unit of water. And by divot, I mean... Oh, we can't do surrounded though. That doesn't work. No, I'm, I'm very sad now. Um... I think I think the answer is to basically fill this up like this. It's just a question of how to do it. So the idea, my my general gist is, we're gonna write this in, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to add more numbers to each of the columns until it's flat like this. Except it might not be flat throughout. And then we calculate how many times we've increased it, and that will tell us how much water we end up filling. So, to do this... Ooh, I just made the entire... Let's not do that again. Don't want, don't want to accidentally push VOD viewers down the stairs. Um, the way to do this... Hmm. <laughs> I guess it would have to be an iterative process. We start We need to start at a column, then look left to see if there's a bigger one, look right to see if there's a bigger one. Kind of like that. But how do we do that? Oh, I guess we could do it one at a time. So, we start at each column. We look left. We look right. We find the biggest on each either side. And then that tells us basically how far up we can go. So we then we just fill it up like that. I think that's probably the best way to go. Actually, we don't even have to fill it up. We can we can leave it empty. And um, just calculate the difference in height. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. So we'll still need to read it into to RAM because we'll need we'll need the we'll need to read the inputs over over and over again. So. First, we need to read in. So, label, read. Um, copy, input into RAM. Increment, red4, 1, red4. If it's not equal to 15, it's 15, right? 15 inputs. Wait, six, fifteen or sixteen? Sixteen inputs. Wait. Okay, so then we do this sixteen times. We've read it all in. Now we set. We'll we'll keep track of the counter. Let's keep it in reg. Zero for now. Okay. Now we need to basically 
we need to find the maximum from zero to red zero, excluding red zero, and from red zero to 16, excluding red zero, including 16. So that's what we need to do. Um, so I think we should do this in two functions. I think that's the easiest way of doing it. And our up so label start max, label end max. Start max is going to very simply set zero to reg four. So register four is gonna be zero. And then copy RAM to reg one. We're gonna store our value in reg one. Then we need we need a loop. Start max loop, and we need a start max skip. And what we're going to do is we're going to check. So if if um, Yeah, so we're going to check if the if RAM is less than reg1. That's what we want. Reg1 will contain our maximum value. If the current value that we're reading is less than reg1, we don't care. We're going to skip. Just like that. Otherwise, the RAM is greater than reg1. In which case we copy RAM to reg1. And then here we increment reg Yeah, we, we increment reg4 by 1. Okay, and I think what we'll do is we'll check at the beginning. So that'll make... I think that'll make it easier for us. So we'll... So let me get Returno. Our good friend Returno. That'll just return. For us. So we'll send... So if it... If... Reg4 equals Reg0, we return. And then at the bottom here, so we don't have to check multiple times, we'll just... There we go, like that. So... So we... Oh no, loop. So we increase reg4 by 1, and then we loop. Okay, so that's that. And max is basically going to be the same, except we're going to have different starting points. We're going to set... Oh, we, well, we're going to copy, actually. We're going to copy reg0 to reg4. And we're going to... In... Oh, wait, we also need to... We'll increment by one already. And then we're going to copy RAM to red 4. And here we want to check if it equals 16. Because we don't care about 16. 16 is, we're too far out. Except we also we also copy to reg two instead. Okay. And and a back loop. And, and Okay, there we go. 
So end max, start max and end max will copy everything through. Exactly how we needed to do. Oh yes. We need to return after we're done. There we go. So. So we've set zero to reg zero. Oh yeah, we need to do the main loop. So we set zero to reg zero. We, actually, we should set it outside. Oop. And we're gonna calculate. Actually, we'll 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 skip the first rank because we don't actually care about the first rank. We're never gonna put water there. So we're gonna set one to reg zero. Then we're gonna call the function start max. We'll call the function end max. Um, and so what we basically want is we want. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll, um, okay, so, so we'll need, we'll need many cases, um, reset loop, so reset loop, because we need to increment a red zero by one. Oh yeah, and then we need to output. Um, neck to reg zero. If reg zero is not equal to sixty, no fifteen, because we don't care about fifteen. We we loop again, and here we need to label right. Uh, set zero to reg four. Uh, copy RAM to output neck to reg for 16 right. okay so I think that's done this is the annoying part uh, so what we're first gonna do is we're gonna check if our current value at RAM is bigger is it or is it at least as big as either side because then we can't get anywhere if it's bigger we definitely can't get anywhere. So we're just going to do that. So we're going to lack... Uh, reg 0... So reg 1... Oh, we need to set... Let's set reg 2 to... Um, yeah, set... Reg 4... Oh no, copy reg 0 to RAM. Uh, not RAM, to reg4. And then copy... Oh, actually, actually, we can just do that after the fact. And just, and just use the, the level there. So we can just say copy reg0 to reg4. So now, so now if we just call RAM, we just get the value back. So now we're basically just going to compare against RAM. So if the value in RAM is bigger than reg1, reg we then just skip, we go to right, uh, to reset loop, sorry. And we do the same for reg2. Okay. Now we need the two cases. So start max big. So if the start max is bigger. Oh wait, no, smaller. We need the smaller case. Small and max small. 
Okay. So if Lek Reg won. Let's do Reg 2, Reg 1, there it is. There. So if register 2 is smaller than or equal to register 1, we do this one. Otherwise we do this one, which automatically runs anyway, so. Um... So then what we do is we'll add register. So if the start max is smaller, we'll add register one to register three. Three is where we'd be collecting all the things. Put that back in register three. Then we will subtract register three, registers, oh, RAM. Whatever's in RAM, register three. And then, no matter what, we go to reset loop. Same thing here. Uh, except it's register 2. Subtract register 3. Oh wait, no, we need to... Yeah, no, that's correct, that's correct, that's correct. Okay. And then we don't need to do that. Okay. There we go. That's gonna be our code. Let's see it run. So we need to copy it in first. Alright, we start at 1. So one should return zero. Oh no, one should return three. Oh four. Actually four, sorry. Two should return six. Okay, that, that, that thing didn't work. Why didn't it work? Don't know why they had instant value there. That would be completely useless as an equation. Four, six. Yep, that's correct. Okay, it collected nothing. So now both of them are six, so... So three should increment by five. So... It incremented by 8. I'm guessing it added 6 and then added 2 more for no reason. Why is that? Did I add the right number in? So in this case, we don't care. Two we do care about, though. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 
15? 16. Okay. Two? Oh no, did I? Gosh darn all of these. All of these immediate values. Okay, so now shoot three shit increment by five. There we go. Exactly what we need it to be. Seven is correct. Now it should be eight. Oh no, it should be seven for now. Now it should be eight. Okay. Then it should be another five, so thirteen. Now it should be a 15. And now it should be 20. Correct. Now it should be 24. And now it should do nothing. Twenty-five. I should do nothing. And... No, no, three more. 28. And the last one should be nothing. I forgot to up... I forgot I have to output it. <laughs> Give me a moment. I calculated the value properly and then I just forgot to output it. <laughs> Oh yeah, right just has to... I don't know what I did there. I just need to send out... Okay, there we go. Just copy registry to alphabet. Sometimes I'm being very silly. There we go. We've we finished it all. Look at this beautiful, beautiful track. And it all started. That was a wire. Hang on. No. It all started with the humble NAND gate. Very nice. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a shorter stream, but so be it. These things happen. Thank you very much for joining me on this wonderful journey through all the different stages of a computer. It's been fun. I think I learned some stuff. I think there's some stuff that... I mean, I didn't obviously implement the most optimal solution, but... You don't have to. Just a correct one. And then, uh... I learned a little bit as well, you know. Learned about, uh... A lot of different infrastructures, how... How, um... I learned at least a flavor of how machines operate. Obviously, a modern computer is like 20 times more complicated, but... You know, the essence has gone through. And also... Learn a, f learn a few new uh, tricks when it comes to the later stages as well. Um, yeah, I do, I, I do really like these kinds of games. I mean, that's... I, I just like the, the subject behind it. The idea of, of uh, 
designing like general purpose programming things. Just because of the amount of power you can harness when when you con when you when you know how to do things, you can do anything, you know. Um, but yeah, and I mean, there there wasn't a lot of like deviations as to as in all of it, all of the stages were there purposefully to bring you to the end, and there wasn't many. Uh, fluffy one fluffy stages that you just do it to get more accustomed to like the different uh, parts of a computer so maybe that's a side project but I mean it shouldn't be part of this tree maybe like a little side thing just just so, just so that people get more accustomed to 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 the uh, esoteric nature of some of these uh, gates and yeah, a lot of it is going to come down to, I guess, the sandbox. That's because they give you a lot of components as well. Like it's not just uh, the the stuff we played with. We also have networks, which records. Oh, we can actually record physical presses on the keyboard. Ooh. That could be exciting. Yeah, I think this could be fun. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I would rather do on my own. Because it would... Um, read bytes from your hard disk. Ooh. Yeah, it's definitely something I would rather do on my own. Just so that... Because, because it looks interesting and it looks fun, but it's also, it would take me ages to get around the most basic concept and it wouldn't be the most interesting thing to look at and I would probably want to to do it to other stuff, but yeah. Looks like there's a lot more uh, to this than just a game. It's also like a tool that you can use to explain stuff, which I need to, I'll need to keep at the back of my mind if I ever want to, to use it. But yeah, um, overall, it was great fun, and ooh, we got access to, ooh, hang on. That, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's a man world. Well, we're very slowly generating. And also the bare minimum as well. The looks of it. <laughs> Wait, what are these components? Oh, these are just loops. Ooh. Very fancy. What is that? Wait. Oh, if it's just reading from a from a RAM, that's kind of cheating. I'll I'll ref I'll pretend that it's not, and it's actually calculating all the values. Um, as they go, but yeah, okay, that's kind of cool. That there, that there's also these kinds of things. Okay, thank you very much for joining me on this, for this game. Uh, can't wait to see what comes next, and I hope you have a good time. Cheers, and bye-bye.